Hi knitters, welcome to PJ Knits. My name is Penny and I live in Central Illinois and I'm a knitter, a blogger, and a YouTube podcaster. And today is Friday, December 9th. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Um, I decided to go ahead and podcast today because I looked at the next week and in the next week here in Central Illinois, there is going to be absolutely no sunshine. It's cloudy for another week. And I thought, well, I better get um, get out here and do a little uh, podcasting. Today we're going to talk about Advents. So um, I'm just going to share some of the Advents that I'm doing this year and some that I have done in the past. Let's, uh, let's start with what's in my cup this afternoon. I am having um, Buffalo Trace bourbon infused coffee and some friends of mine stumbled upon um, Buffalo Trace distillery bourbon cream. So I got a little bit of that in there for a little afternoon uh, pick me up from the gray skies. That is what's in my cup of today. So um, yeah, it's gray outside. I just spent a wonderful morning having uh, a brunch with some knitting friends. It was so much fun um, to get together and uh, and uh, be with them for a little for a little while till I had to get home for an appointment. Um, the bathroom remodel project is done, and I have used it in the last couple of days, and it was a lot of work. Um, for the person who did it remodeling, but for me, because I had to pull things out of a cabinet and, and so, and then things had to go back into cabinets and stuff. And, but the nice thing about that, when you do something like that, you can um, decide where you want now. Uh, it refreshed everything and I refreshed where I was keeping things and, and you know, I, how I wasn't needing, you know, five or six COVID tests sitting there in the bathroom. I could, I could store them away for if, and hopefully never need them. So anyway, so the bathroom remodel project's done and I'm so pleased, it's beautiful. It's just what we would have wanted. Um, a little walk-in shower and um, in, in the um, Caribbean colors that I wanted and gray, so uh, it's super, super fun. My intention at some point in time is to not only try and do a little um, walkabout here in uh, Shea PJ Knits showing you my Christmas decorations because this year after uh, um, really last year and the year before that with COVID, I really didn't do any decorations in the last couple of years. And so this year um, I decided while the remodel was going on, I couldn't put anything up. So I decided to go through all my bins and maybe see what was actually there and get some sort of organization done. And it just spurred me on when I was, um, as I was doing that and as some of the remodeling was completing, that it was time to decorate. And um, not only do I have decorations in this room, I have some in my new bathroom. I have a knitting tree in my bedroom and I have a turquoise tree in my spare room, uh, a few things in my kitchen. And of course, then in my living room, a tree and all of some Snoopy stuff. So, um Going from something, somebody who wasn't going to decorate at all again this year to full-blown decorating, I figured I might as well enjoy it. So anyway, um, I hope to maybe do a little uh, walkabout at some point in time and maybe use and try to splice it all together. You know, it may not be till the end of the, uh, the year, but we, who knows. So anyway, let's just get started with um, Advents this year. Grab a cuppa, grab your knitting, and uh, let's, let's start. The first one I've talked about, and I just want to show you, is again, um, is the Door County Coffee and Tea Company. This is a um, coffee advent, and every day you get to open up um, a pouch, and it's a full pot, so it's, it's perfect. So I'm loving this one. This one was a birthday gift from my friend Brenda, and um, I'm having so much fun with these making them every morning. I'm an early riser, so I um, open it up and take the pick for Instagram, and then um, then I make a pot. Uh, there's been a couple of days where I haven't been able to make the pot 
because I knew I wasn't going to drink the whole pot. So I've saved those. And some of them will go really well with bourbon cream. So I've saved kind of those. But most days, there's a flavored coffee that I have um, every day from this particular um, Advent. And this is something I'm going to, I you know, as you do Advents and buy them, I keep thinking I will... Um, I'm making notes for next year of what I want to do because I want to change my advents up, I think, a little bit next year. So this one is definitely on my list for next year. And so um, that is a whole lot of fun. Um, another advent that I'm a, a part of is a group of four ladies. Two of them I've never met personally. And then other, the other is my friend Peggy who lives here in, um, in Illinois close by and we knit together. And so we uh, exchanged um, Advents. And what, it, what the premise of this was is that you would do six minis for the other three and um, include for the 25th a special gift that was less, that was around $10. So they'd have something to open on the 25th. And then each day you would pick out either um, one of theirs that is dated or mine um, in, some, in that case as well. And for specific dates and then um, and then you could do what you wanted with them mine I knew all along that I wanted to put into my um, cozy memories blanket which is something that I have done the last couple of years I did it last year um, doing just minis that were in my collection and then the year before I think probably the same and then this year all of the minis from this special group of four um, is going into my Cozy Memories blanket each day. And this way I will accomplish for the month of December um, 24 squares. And um, it's really too big to, to show you the entire thing, but I'll, sh I'll show you where I started. What I like to do on the first day of December is put a special marker in it to signify what block I started with. And this was a gift last year. From a friend of mine Anastasia and so the progress keeper is in there and then I just included a square a day it went this way not that way and then I just included a square a day from each of the girls or mine when it got to Sunday because I do scrappy Sunday normally through the year I put a special marker in on I'll move the Sunday marker that my friend Annetta gave to me last year and so I am just working down with all of my um, all of the scraps with all of the things so there's a collection of what we've done what I've done so far in my scrappy blanket and then uh, yesterday um, it was time to start a new uh, row and so here is yesterday's and today's and I just put them in my blanket it doesn't matter uh, what's next or next or what's around them um, it goes if it's two burgundies it's two burgundies and so um, I will take a picture of the all of the blanket when I'm done and um, you can see right now I put it on my queen size bed and it's just about large enough to compass the width but I'm just going to keep going on this until I get enough to put on my, my bed um, downstairs or upstairs. I um, haven't really decided. So you can see it is pretty huge. And this is the Cozy Memories blanket. I have talked about this before. It's a free pattern on Ravel Ravelry um, by Georgie Hallam was her original name. And also I will link all of the um, notes on things that I'm talking about down below in the description box. Give me a couple of days. Sometimes it takes me a little bit longer to do those. But so this is going to be this. I I do a square a day on this. And the funny thing about this is what happens when you commit to something in a um, uh, advent. Your other knitting kind of goes by the wayside. And as you as if you watch the last. Um, episode I am knitting on something for a Christmas present and so I have to make myself hurry up and get this done uh, square done so I can go back to working on it um, and generally I, I try and work on this early in the morning um, I, as I said I'm an early riser so 
I pull out my advents and open them up, take the pictures for Instagram and for my blog, and then um, commence to, to drinking my coffee and knitting on this like right away so that I can get it done. So anyway, that is a, uh, I really enjoy doing those um, one a day um, because it gives me, like I said, gives me some width or length on my blanket and um, I feel like I'm um, moving along on something. I will have to say after the 24th day, I'm glad that I only have to come back and visit it on this, on a Sunday, every Sunday of the year. So um, sometimes, sometimes during the Sundays I like to do a couple, but um, I'm, I'm chomping at the bit to do other knitting, right? So um, anyway, that is one, that is the second one I do. The other one that I ordered again this year is from Chelsea Yarns, and she does a bag a day, and I uh, showed you the big box, and her advent this year is Chelsea Yarns um, Apres Ski 2022, and they all have a, a theme. Today is the ninth, and today's uh, colorway is called Winter Nights. She gives you a little card. <clears throat> And also there was a uh, pat free pattern um, download for a hat and a large cowl by Shana um, Billow that was included as part of this um, advent. And here is today's colorway. And I have not decided yet what I'm going to do. I, I, am, I got this one on the sparkle base and I don't know what I want to do with it. Um, so I'm not doing anything. Last year, <clears throat> last year this time was a different kind of year, and so um, I could I could focus on knitting something or yeah, knitting. Kind of took my um, um, made me want to do it at night. That was something. That's about all I had the mindset to do last year. I guess is where I'm going. Um, and so um, this year, I haven't quite decided what I what I want to do. I wanted to do, I think, a sweater and hold it with um, mohair and use each of them. And I think there's sufficient yardage on those to do that, but I haven't quite settled on one. Um, Beth McDonald Stone has a really super cool one, and I'm leaning towards that. Um, and she also has a sale, 25% off on her patterns right now. So, um, so I'm thinking that I might want to do that. But I don't know if I want a sparkle sweater. That's, I'm kind of vacillating on that, along with the fact that I don't have any mohair hair for it right now. So that one's just going to be determined, and I'm just setting those aside, and when I figure out what I want it to be, I will. Um, it may be another shawl. It may be, um, I may do the cowl um, with um, Surrey alpaca's um, yarn as well. So we'll, that's kind of... Um, that's out there. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Um, my last one that I have that I want to show you, this one I've had forever, and this is not really an advent, but this is something years and years and years ago. I worked for a local department store that was um, over Illinois and into Wisconsin, and I worked in the stationery and China and Gifts. I was a supervisor there, and then went on to the buying uh, team for them before my kids were born. So um, I purchased this, what I, what I call, back in the day, we didn't have Advents, like chocolate and all that. Um, and I didn't really know what they were, but this is my Advent. And I believe it was a Hallmark item at the time, or maybe it was part of the gift department. So each day you just move a little thing. And so this sits downstairs and um, I've had this for quite some time. So this is the forerunner of <laughs> my advents before I started knitting. <laughs> and I just wanted to share with that because that's super, super cute. I love that. You know, the beginning of advent. What can I say? Okay. Cup of time. Okay. Now... As I said before, <clears throat> I'm kind of rethinking all of the advents for next year of what I want to do. This has been my second year for Chelsea Yarns, so I think after this year I probably will take a break from that one. But, you know, um, there's some others out there that I have done that, uh, again, I'm taking a break from them. And, I will, and I'm making notes as I watch podcasts and vlogmases this year to see, you know, a possible 
um, advents that I might want to do. And I might want to just do my scrappy blanket again next year. It just depends on um, how much knitting that I want to do because, um, you know, this certainly is fun. And, and um, <clears throat> uh, if I do only a square allows me to do other knitting as well. So, but one of the things that I, again, I uh, shared before just in past advents was The Dust of Snow by Helen Stewart. This was last year's um, advent from Chelsea Yarns. And I held um, a skein, I held a thread, a yarn, I held a strand of Sandus Garden mohair in a cream and then also um, used each of, almost each of my minis. Um, I said this was last year's, which I totally love this I totally love this concept, and so that's why I'm thinking maybe that's what I, not a sweater, but another mohair, or I'm putting Siri and doing another shawl out of it, or um, a wrap of some sort. <clears throat> and this is dust of snow, and if you, you know, just in general, you, not for necessarily for your advents, but if you have some gradients or some things that you want might want to do that you haven't made a decision on. I think this was a super, super fun um, wrap for last year. It is huge and you could make it um, much smaller if you wanted. Um, I think what I would like to do is make it um, not as long and wide and make it wider. And so I may do it again or I may look at patterns out there that are about the same that is a, this kind of wrap. There are so many um, advents to choose from. And I don't believe you necessarily, you know, last year was an unusual year where I felt like I needed to knit on every one of them, my advents that I got. <clears throat> and um, I really didn't. You know, it was really a, a um, undue pressure, I think. So there's no reason that you have to finish, you know, your advents or even start them, obviously, um, before that. Um, two years ago, I did a advent from Sun Valley Fibers, and there was a download for Amba O'Brien's advent, Adventurous Wrap. And as I started knitting on this particular one, this was one, it was two years ago, and I was working, and I was working on some socks and probably working on some Christmas presents, and there came a time when I was, I was kind of like, nah, I'm done. I'm done. I don't, I can't. I can't knit anymore um, on this project. I wanted I wanted to be knitting on other things. And as it happens, on this particular one, um, this is the Adventures Wrap, but I made it into a triangular wrap. And this is the Sun Valley Fibers. And they were um, a lot of gradients that year. And I still have a lot of their, the yarns left um, for this one. But as it happens, this particular... Um, colorway when I stopped went with a, a wonderful top that I got for Christmas that year it was in all of these colors so it goes perfect with that so you know there's no reason as that you can't as you knit on your advent there's no reason you can't make a self-imposed stopping point right this is where I wanted to do and this yarn is their fingering yarn and it is so super super soft that year it was gradients and it was all the gradients that are listed in here, very subtle gradients, as you can see. So I was happy uh, to, um, I was happy when I could wear this and just make the triangular, stop it as a triangular shawl and not add the wrap to it. But I, a, a, another great pattern that I could totally revisit for my Chelsea Lux yarns advent. Hmm. There's a thought there. <laughs> I may have to investigate that and not do it with mohair, but do the wrap again with that one. So super, super cool. And then last year also, I did a Legacy Fiber Arts one for 2021. It was their 2021 Advent Kit. And the pattern that went along with that one was the Snow Day Stocking. It was by um, Natalie Sheldon of Remembrances. She designed it. And I purchased, I got the advent from there. This was with, um, there is a couple of these that has 
um, Stellina in it, and it's a stocking. And then I came to the point where day 13, where I um, over, <laughs> I over um, committed myself to what I was going to do per day. And so on day 13, I stopped, and that's where it has sat since last Christmas. And I think at this point in time, it's um, it's a super long sock. Sock. I'm not even ready to do the um, heel flap and gusset yet, and so it's a super long stocking. I my intention, I think, was to stop, just plain stop, and and call it quits. But as I was looking at this today, I have decided that I. Um, I might continue on with it at some point in time, and I think it would make a super nice scarf. And this is perfectly okay, and I would just put rib on the other side as well. So I think I might um, I might continue on with this um, at some point in time. So that was the Legacy Fiber Arts um, and um, Remembrances um, Advent uh, Legacy Yarns and her pattern from last year. And then two years ago, I believe, I also did the Cozy Knitter one, the socks. It was a stripe a day, and again, this was one of the years that I was still working. So, um, and that was fun to do as well. And this year, I did not do it um, again. It, was, it could have been, it wasn't last year, so it would have been 2020, I believe, that I did the stocking the socks. And this year I didn't, I thought about doing it, but I, since I have not knit my socks <clears throat> that's been on the needles practically forever, <laughs> or that I pulled out of my whip basket to do um, this year, I decided not to. But I have been watching other um, feeds on Instagram, and there's some really cool, um, hers this year was really neat, and then there was some other um, dyers that were doing a stripe a day that had some really bright colors that I'm looking at. And so I am making a note of those in my journal so that I can remember those last year and kind of um, watch those, watch for those next year. Because um, as I said, I'm really rethinking um, I'm rethinking where I want to, um, where, what, what particular ones that I want to do um, for next year. Um, I have to, I have to think. I have to think about that, you know, and 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 be um, not so hot to just click on one and buy one all of a sudden, but make some make some good decisions and you know and maybe um, adventure out a little bit um, on my advents. So, um, mistletoes is um, a thread in the Ravelry PJ Knits uh, group. Please post your um, your finished socks there by the end of the year so we can um, choose the final winner um, um, probably January 1st um, and um, and uh, get your prize out to you um, for the last of this year in the mistletoes thread. Not sure if we're going to continue mistletoes next year or not or choose something else or just um, leave the thread um, as it is. Okay, um, Burra Cowl 2023. If you are joining us, we are going to cast on the Marie Wallen um, Burra Cowl. It's a, a, I've talked about it last time and showed you my yarns. It is a multi-podcast um, knit-along. Mine is going to go through the end of July. And I just wanted to um, give you a heads up to those of you out there who have not bought your yarn. This particular one, the yarn she knit this one out of is out of Shetland um, Spindrift. And the Schoolhouse Press between now and December 18th has a sale of a dollar off of each of their skeins. So if you're thinking about doing the actual yarn, um, that Marie used, you can head out to Schoolhouse Press and get um, get it on sale as well. And while we are there, I am going to, I will notify 
um, the winners of the two um, the two winners of the free um, Burra cowl pattern. Um, I have yet to choose those. I will close this down today um, once I get the video uploaded and then I will um, choose the winners from YouTube comments of last last time for um, two of you to get the pattern for Burra cowl that you expressed an interest in knitting along with us. So those I will contact you via um, a comment um, there um, in the next couple of days so that you can uh, let me know what your Ravelry um, name is so that I can gift those patterns to you. So I hope that you will join us um, uh, in the knit along. I think it's going to be fun. It certainly is going to get me back into some color work. I've heard from a lot of you that are um, and wanting to do it and um, a good way to, uh, to, to perfect your color work um, as well as how how much you like some of the other patterns in there and um, uh, for color work. And so I think, you know, 2023 is kind of like my my thought process again. I really want to do some color work. I want to be good at it. I want to be proficient at it. And, um, and there's a lot of color work patterns I want to do. So I think this is a good way of doing it. So I hope that you will join us in that. Now, um, books and bags. I only have one um, book that I want to share with you. This particular book was suggested by Joyce, um, and thank you, Joyce, for recommending this. I love it when people recommend books for, for me to read, and this particular one is The Power of Knitting, Stitching Together Our Lives in a Fractured World by Loretta Napoli Napoleone. Got mine off of Amazon, and I'm not too far into it. Um, how Knitting Empowers, Heals, and Reconnects Us to One Another and Ourselves. And so um, I am um, reading a little bit of it, um, a little bit <laughs> at a time. And I just wanted to share a couple of uh, beginning passage, uh, beginning um, notes here. Um, the first one is the author's note. And I thought this was very appropriate for me and hope, and I know for some of you, um, I feel like an old but strong yarn in the hands of a mediocre and insecure knitter who keeps making big mistakes and changing her mind about what to knit. I have been knitted, undone, and re-knitted several times over. <laughs> I have been washed, stretched, and dried before re-stitched and re -purled. so often I have lost count. Each time the pattern of life I must follow becomes more challenging more demanding, and yet I have managed to perform almost as well as a brand new yarn. But this time is different. This is the last attempt. I have reached my limit. I must get the pattern right. This is the story of a remarkable craft, a much needed social healer that reminds us that to exist, we need each other. Knitting is a good metaphor for our life. It can be related to everything we care about, from politics to economics to personal relationships. My aim is to address complex and often painful issues, both public and private, using knitting as a means to unravel and understand them. All we need to do to break free of our existential malaise is to keep purling and stitching, knitting our lives together. I thought that was pretty great, just in the few pages. So I don't know what the rest of the book will bring, but um, so far, um, I will. Um, I'll keep you posted on that as we go along. So um, I hope to be back before Christmas. Uh, do you all realize that Christmas is about two weeks and two days away? <laughs> How does that happen? So I hope to be able to get back out here and uh, podcast one more time before that. Um, if not, it'll be after Christmas. We'll, we'll just see how it goes, see if I have anything worth telling you. Um, <clears throat> either way, if I don't get back before the holidays, for those of you who do celebrate, have a wonderful Christmas. Um, I have um, plans for... Um, 
three days of family Christmases with um, our family, um, each day bringing something new, and um, uh, that's just the way it is, right? So um, I hope you have a great, blessed holiday for those of you who celebrate. Um, I will definitely be back before the new year because we'll want to talk about Burakal again and some other things and some yarny, um, yarny presents that are in the making. So um, until next time, thanks so much for everyone who has tuned in, who comments below your kind words, um, your willingness to um, knit along with me um, and for listening, just listening. Um, I do appreciate it so much. Um, I hope the sun might be shining where you're at. <laughs> and if not, we'll make our own sun shine and uh, we'll knit it. So what can I say? So until next time, knit on with confidence and hope through all crisis. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>